There's just no, there's no reason to, uh, well, to vary this much in champions. But your last games on Vilkas are looking fucking clean. Your CS is hot garbage. That's probably the reason why you're not winning as much. So you kind of excel at, uh, as far as I can tell, we're gonna watch your game. As far as I can tell, you're probably doing well in team fights. You're positioning correctly. Uh, you're you're good at not dying. Uh, but you're trying to be in every fucking single fight because your kill participation is relatively high for silver solo queue. So you're just chasing fights instead of uh, farming it up. So you gotta be selfish and farm up. Um, yeah, let's um. Uh, what do you do with the farm if you're not gonna fight? Well, there are tricks like high elo, obviously like. In high elo, you shouldn't lose much farm, even if you are fighting. Um, as you saw in my last game, that, that was just one of the tricks. Level 1, you don't push, in case a fight happens. I was in the fight, and I still caught the CS more than Silas. That's just understanding the game and thinking in advance, like one minute, and potential. Like, there's a small chance that they're invading and they're fighting, so you don't push, you know? Because if you hit the wave, you cripple the wave. Uh, say, like, if you understand proper wave management, even in mid-game, when you should fall down in CS, you don't fall down, because you're properly bouncing, shoving, slow pushing, freezing, you know what you're doing. And third one is uh, because solo queue in low velo is very, very fucking aggressive. People fight all the time. The trick is to fight only in beneficial scenarios to you, but like a standard deviation, you know? Like, you don't always want to try to play correct because people are going to like make a call as four and you don't follow it up so you, like it would have worked either way if you all followed up or if you played your way your way was probably better but you, you you're not there in a fight so it's just like a bunch of decision making um crossroads where you decide do you go in or do you not go in a lot of the ways is just very stupid to follow up what your team is doing because then you get sucked into their place and that means you're not playing solo queue you're playing some other dude's game, you're following his calls, which is not, not good when you're trying to exert your own impact. Because you want to exert the most impact possible by yourself. How you do that is by playing selfish. But trick is to find a balance of just not selfish enough to like alienate the teammates and make them hate you completely and just run it down, you know? See, I was playing selfish in all of my games so far, those two. I was playing rel relatively selfish. Uh, but what you're doing by that playstyle is you're slowing the game down. You're being the anchor point and the team slows down around you. And if they play around you, they win. If they don't, if they're monkeys, they lose. So. Um, Bar, Draven are all in characters. You two are poke characters mostly. Then level 6 can all in. So it's kind of a... It's kind of a mismatch. You don't want to fight all. You you don't want to commit the fights. They do. So if you hover on the edge of distance, which you should be able to, you can win this matchup easily. Hey man, love your stream. Thanks for teaching the ways of skate. Thank you, Nash. Appreciate it. Uh, I do what I can. Okay, wrong skin for support. Okay, we're gonna let that slide. I'm curious about the runes. Uh, yeah, full on copy one by one. Oh, uh, nice. So this is a classic try hard, speedy boy. I like it. Seconds until minions spawn. Oh shit. You're even trying to get mana flow bands for free, which is good. You can probably get this guy. Let's go, let's go, let's go. That's good. Recall. Nice. That's beautiful advantage. Zoe trolled both summoners. That's free low for Zek. Zek just has to gank her pre six. It's over. Mm, nice try, nice try. I like what you're doing. Okay, beautiful. So far, good game. You're, you're flawless so far, man. Okay, that's a bit too much. You don't shoot that much. Because um, the thing about support is mid lane, you might be able to do like three. Oh, on support, usually I go two max Qs because uh, then you're going to hurt your mana bar. And supports really run out of mana fast. Uh, you will see a lot, a lot of uh, support mains on well because they will like spam all the time, and they uh, then they run out of mana and they're really useless. By level three, they're out of mana, which is like it sucks. You just lose all pressure. Hey, Gucci coffin, made it today. 
You only shoot one Q on the on the help. Don't shoot two. He doesn't need it. No! Don't do, don't do it! Selfish! Be fucking selfish, okay? There we go. Now, here's the key thing people don't realize in solo queue. If you help, opponents don't. There are two factors to keep in mind. If you help, they don't. Means that first one, more likely the jungle started here, especially when it's fucking fiddle, he has to start blue. Like unless he like start like fiddle can start this and then rush blue. But he is more likely to be starting blue. So you understand that fiddle is here. So three minute mark, you gotta care be careful. Second thing is the more important one for you directly is they have the prior of lane because you're late. So now, not only do you have a mismatch in fighting here, in this matchup, not only are they stronger in an all-in than you, they have the prio, so they can get the level 2 faster and they can go force all-in on you. So the trick is not to get baited by minions level 2. You gotta understand you gave a little bit of prio by helping, so you have to play conservatively and play safe just to equalize the wave. After then, you look for pull. Now, no overcommitting. No overcommitting. If you overcommit, you, you get fucked. So just Q probing, getting mana flow bans, that's it. You can't commit. That's a, a bad positioning. Don't go that deep. If Bard was smarter, he could have cut you off. See, if you're here, Bard cuts you off. Bard, like, chunks... You, you, they both deal way more damage than you. And they're close to level level 2 because they can, like, mid-fight pop 2 minions level up chase you. Now, if it if it'll does like a uh, fucking if it'll does the bot lane clear into gank is like horrendous, it's absolutely horrendous, because he's gonna lose his blue buff after that, and he's just stuck, he's just stuck in the jungle. Okay, good poke, good distancing. This early gun is be very passive and boring, and it should be. If it's not, you're playing it wrong. <laughs> So yeah, that's good. Just just poke. Keep on laying down the poke. See, so your mana bar is almost 40%, which means like this poke is irrelevant, what you're doing early. Early is just mana flow band stacking. You don't want to fall so behind in mana by level 3 that you can't exert enough of pressure and like fear factor on them. Because if they see that you can't even dish like dish out like a full combo in level three, then you're you're non factor. That's good. That's a sure thing. You W is also worth it because he's low and you get true damage. Don't chase. Don't chase. Uh, don't chase. Don't chase. Don't chase. Don't chase. Stop! No! Don't chase. Yeah, that was just a bad mistake. You went to an old lane. You got baited by Bardo. He will die as well, he has heal. And there it is. Okay. So again, they're pushing, you're not. Your level three will not come soon, theirs will. Um, you get a decent combo, this is where you abort the trade. This is where the trade is won, abort, reset the wave, play for level three. Now, you commit, which is stupid. Um, if you turn on Draven, you maybe have a chance of beating that. You maybe have a chance of beating that. This was just wrong in like two ways. You shouldn't fight at all. And the second one is like you chasing. Maybe you could have beat the Draven like 2v1. She doesn't use a single summoner because she's a solo queue player. That's her mistake, but we're not looking at her. Who the fuck cares? You gotta be prepared for your teammates to be absolute morons. So yeah, inevitably you die. It's just a bad play. You understand the mistakes, as I laid it down earlier, they had prio, which is one big mistake, so they get the advantage off of levels, the second thing is like they have good all in, you guys don't. This is like a perfect freeze after that, because they didn't hard shove it in due to long chase, so you can freeze here and get extra advantage. But yeah, you shouldn't fall behind there, because against Draven the worst thing you can do is fall behind. Now your poke is meaningless, because he has... Uh, like infinite sustain very early on with Bard in this, so they bought two pings, they're gonna choke you out. She's pushing for no reason. Now because she pushed, 
Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh, this is silver. I don't, I'm, I'm just gonna run down with this, and if anyone wants it more in detail, they can like listen and unpack it. So what happens here is like there, there are two waves. One, two. Uh, uh, wave three comes in. She cleared both waves really quickly, which she shouldn't. Uh, wave three comes in. Does this one? Uh, it's a cannon one. You should clear it, but in a, such a slow push manner that it stays here by the wave four. On the wave four, you hard shove. That means that the wave is gonna crash here. So the two wave stack crashes with a cannon, and then you guys get a free reset. That's a cheater recalling bot lane. Uh, whatever, but it's silver, so we're not gonna go too deep into it. Uh, yeah, there's no reason to, to push this. Now, with this wave, hard push from here. Because uh, what, what I... What that was supposed to do is like, you meet the wave really close to your side, which gives you advantage. They have, they're afraid, and then you can hard shove due to minion advantage. Because if they trade you, they have super, too many minions. So you just hard shove this. This is the wave that you must hard shove. If this one goes very slow, they're going to freeze it here, and you, you lost the game. See? Now you can even trade. You should play more aggressive here. This is the point where you actually can trade, because you have like 20 minions, you know? No, they can't really tank it, because he got poke, and they didn't freeze it. You should have, um, you've kind of fucked it up. You're playing too passive, and you should have followed it up here. You should have followed it up here, so just in case they don't uh, freeze it, and if they try, you punish them. So you want to escort the wave under third. Now this, what what it does, it ensures that the wave clumps here, and it's going to bounce back to you eventually anyway. So you deny them a full freeze. Now again, poke is irrelevant, both have infinite stain, play for manifold bands, potential level 6 combo. This is a really bad position to be in, you guys already lost the lane. Bard will outroam you and they will beat you in 2v2, so you have no redeeming qualities in this bot lane, unless they really make big mistakes. So I gotta play off of their mistakes now, or a gank. You're not dying like for no reason and you're understanding the waves decently, so this is actually pretty solid for silver, honestly. Bard left, you punished him with the trading, that's cool. Zack bottom side. I'm gonna watch the clip uh, after this game. That's good pull. I ah you piss position. A misposition there, but it serves the purpose of baiting at least. Nice, free money. Chase. Uh, he's gonna like tunnel here. I don't know if you can kill him. Oh, wait, what? He doesn't know how to place a tunnel. <laughs> secure it, secure it. Fuck AD carry. Eh, it's fine. Uh, for support, it's very important that you get early spikes. Now you can. Uh, I guess it's enough. You can buy a boat, Dark Seal, and finish the Mobies. Very cool. You can leave this in a slow push, but I guess you can shove it when you cripple the wave already. You gotta shove it now. Uh, I don't know about this dragon. It's extremely risky. Oh, she's very low. Pick up the fruits. You don't have your mid lane, she has no teleport. Uh, but yeah, Fiddle is not here, so you could. Combo, get the fuck up. Get the fuck out. You wanna reset. You wanna reset as soon as possible. Do a full combo, get out. Get out. If you miss a recall here, you're wasting advantage. Huge advantage being wasted if you don't recall. Ah, you didn't eat him, dude. If you eat him, he... You should have eat Bardo. If he kills him, it's your fault. Ah, I guess he didn't die to Bard. So. Technically not your fault, he would have died other anyway, but you should have slowed him down. Recall, 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 there's nothing you can do here. Nothing you can do, you're missing a recall with like 1.2k. 1.2k is like the fucking advantage that they have, it's so enormous right now. You, you should not miss this recall, there's nothing for you to stay. It was like 15 seconds wasted. Should have been like on par with Misfortune here. Ah. Uh. Okay, Mobis. You go Amp, you don't go Dark Seal? That's fine. A Dark Seal is very optional and should have bought a, a ward or a fucking potion. Because you have no stain. If they chunk you once, you're, you're out. 
Yeah, now you got your core items. Well, uh, yeah, a ass lols or um, overstaying like this just to help Rome is uh, the thing I particularly talked about earlier before the game started is you getting sucked in by monkey plays, you know? It's like monkey fiesta plays is you getting sucked in and never getting any resources. There's a there's a level of selfishness that must occur in, in correctly gameplay, you know? So you want to play for yourself. Not in fuck my teammates, I will not help you, I will not heal you, but in playing properly. Slow, only fighting on your terms. Only taking fights when you should. That's good, they're overextending. These guys have no filter, they don't understand how Zek works. Oh, uh, that's fine, you should get one though. Oh my god, Zek. He's not gonna die from that. We need a long range Q. That was a bit bad. He should have aimed for Bard there. He should have aimed for Bard, honestly. Let's see, let's see. Oh, that's depressing. Oh, they actually both live. Sick. That was kind of depressing. A lot of misplays on all sides, but. Jesus, the blood difference is huge. Yeah, they're salty as fuck. Yeah, they're getting destroyed by Zek. Pick up the plate, pick up the plate, get the fuck out. You shouldn't have hit the wave because you're gonna clump with the second one. Again, like wave management, you know? If you left this wave alive, there's no value in killing it at all. Uh, if you left it alive with this one, they clump and they push together as two waves and they're gonna meet you here and you're gonna have advantage and more experience in CS. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't even help you get an item sooner, so it was completely pointless to hit it. So now I'm gonna get uh, a sperm, and I would buy Dark Seal because you can't buy anything else. Sperm, pink. Sperm, Dark Seal, pink. Yeah. Are you gonna wait for Empto? Okay, rushing Twin Shadows, that's fine. You're, you're itemizing very correct here, it's good. Now is a level 6 spike. This is actually where you guys have a chance of fighting. Uh, the key point is, you're both high damage dealers. So you both are, are valuable for punishing. So you both can be caught. That That's it. Like, if you get ulted by Bard, it's over. If you get both stunned by Bard, it's over. So all you gotta do is separate and play two different angles and poking and... If they engage one, the other will punish. That's how it works. I'm silver and I really don't understand when I'm supposed to hit the wave and I'm not. Well, it's a bit more complex than silver. That's why I said I'm not going to go in, in depth. It's a bit too complex for silver. Uh, what, it ma what it matters is that after getting a kill, fucking shove the wave. If you can, shove the wave just so you bounce it. That, that, that's it. I, setting up slow pushes and like gaining minor advantages through that is more of a high reload thing. It's, it's a bit complex. So yeah, this is great for Silver 4, honestly. The, even the wave management is like really good for Silver 4. I've seen diamonds for for way dumber. So good combo. You still get stunned, but she, it, Draven could interrupt her, so it's good that she didn't ult. Ult, 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 ult. Nice. Eh. If, the, if the ult was more predictive earlier, that would be fine. Or if you did like a minor sidestep to create more distance, which would in turn give you more damage before he interrupts you. So both works. Ooh. Okay, run left, run left, abandon. You could have... Eh, I don't know, with a barrier you could have maybe lived and... Or lived just long enough to bait for your team. That was just really sad on, on the bard kill. Bard should have been dead. But yeah, good punish, good teleport, honestly. Dude, your team is playing really well for Silver. Like, they're not wasting time on, on fucking Nasus, as they shouldn't. Zack ganking bot lane because they're overextending. Lux paying attention, teleporting. 
Like, this is good fucking macro, I swear. <laughs> it's weird. And a macro on a whole another level. Red team's turret has been destroyed. Okay, you don't hit the wave here. You don't want to hit it. You're a support. Don't want to ruin it. Yeah, like this is not. This is something you don't do on a, on a speedy boy. Um, if your AD carry is not there and the wave is there, like you're not gonna push it. There's no reason in pushing the wave because it's gonna go towards you anyway. And you're not gonna hit it. So first of all, you can't hit it. You shouldn't hit it. And your AD carry is here. So now you have to wait 30 seconds of babysitting the wave, just watching it while you're being visible to opponents and irrelevant on the map. So at this point, utilize a speedy boy, go roam. Even if you can't get a kill, you appearing like on this shit, just appearing on this is gonna make Zoe play slower, potential freeze here can occur, you can you can rotate, you can go for deep vision in here, bam, 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 whatever. Yeah, you can try to, try to be relevant. Try to be relevant in this time, because you're gonna be fucking useless here. Yeah, see, if you were here, this play would have much, much better prosperity, you know? See? See? Um, this is all potential you. In a 3v2, there's 3v1, there's no way she could do that. You were just watching the wave in bot lane, that's it. That's a missed opportunity, a big one. That's the whole reason why we go speedy boy, because uh, this movement speed, like this is like already like 480 or something. Yeah, 484. Uh, you can utilize this to like, zoo, zoo, boom, 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 boom. You wouldn't miss shit, like in a blink of an eye. You can even match barred movement speed here in the rooms. This is NA Silver 4. Okay, nice. That's a good trade. No interrupt. No interrupt. You didn't do a side step back. You didn't do a side step back, which makes. Uh, let's call it a good play. It was way riskier than it should have been. You would have got out without using barrier as well. But whatever. It, it's solid. It's solid enough for Silver 4. But you should have made a side step back there. Like, what should. Like. Velka's ult range is so huge. Let me show you. Just for reference sake. Um. Just for reference sake. Um, so we're playing versus Draven who has no ult. And there's only one thing to keep track. Vettery uses his step aside. And he used it very early on. Use it there. Boom. Now, you comboed him already. You made him come. You have vision in here. Okay? Now. Okay. This is your laser that's gonna hit. And that's his range, coincidentally. Okay? This is his range. So he's gonna hit you while lasering. Now, all of this distance up until here is your laser. All of this distance gets wasted. He's gonna get slowed. So, while he's slowed and running, you're gonna proc true damage from like here. So, you can do that much distancing back and ult. Because you're gonna proc true damage fully anyway, and you're gonna make a decision on him as well. You're gonna force an ultimatum. Do I run and get true damage proc'd while getting punished by her? Or does he stay in trade and like, which means he has to make like a, a tiny sidestep towards you, tiny move towards you while he's not dealing damage, while he's fucking useless and taking like a full frontal. So just a minor sidestep here would have sufficed in you like, in her not having to heal you, not having to bury her. And you were very close to dying, this real, so that, that could have gone either way. It was just, it was definitely not calculated, you know? But yeah, uh, good stuff, good, good. Uh, you recognize that you step aside so you could combo, that's a good thing. So now you just have to optimize your usage of the ult. Uh, you should have recalled, there's no reason for you to stay. Like, pick up Twin Shadows, pick up, um... You can either go Banshee or, or, or Landry's, probably Landry's because they're support, you don't care if they, co if they combo you. You compile that, nice. Now you run. Now you can Now you can run anywhere. That's the thing. You can even run top lane here just to like check in, see what's going on. Cause she needs to recall anyway. If you go bot lane, you're gonna end up babysitting the wave again. 
she absolutely needs to recall. So you going bot lane here, again, misuse of the speedy boy. You're a babysitter here. Okay, pop fin shadows, pop fin shadows. Luck stayed, he stayed. He has flash, shouldn't die. Overshot, that's fine. Flash punish, not bad. Now you know she's gonna recall, you go, you go elsewhere. You go elsewhere. You go elsewhere, don't stay here. There's no reason for you to stay. Okay, she doesn't recall. What, what is she doing? She has 1k. Okay, good one. But Lux is also staying. Oh, she has 300 only. Okay, while Andre, there's squishies. Uh, it doesn't matter, you're, you're a support. So, like, it's just too good. Uh, first of all, Landry is like the most efficient damage wise item you can buy in Velkus. Second of all, you're going Twin Shadows anyway, which slows them. While they're slowed, your Landry deals more damage. So if you just proc Landry's with W, it's gonna deal more damage. If you proc it with Comet, it's gonna deal more damage. You know? Because everyone's slowed. Your Q and E inherently slow, your R slows. So just Landry is like the flawless item for Velkus. The only way it could be better is if it enhances the true damage by its 10%, which it doesn't. Landry doesn't get procced by Twin Shadows, but okay. Um, can I check fucking items now? Um, nobody fucking reads this. Nobody knows this shit. Um, Landry's Torment. Nobody reads this. Um, okay, look. Look, 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 look. Damaging an enemy champion generates one stack every second. Okay, so it, it like the longer in combat you are, the more damage you deal. Which, like, you're gonna proc it and you're gonna keep stacking damage. Fine. This doesn't enhance true damage, sadly. It, it was... They it, they changed it. Um, torment. Dealing ability damage in, applies damage over time. Effect for three seconds deals total of 4.5% of target's max health bonus magic damage. So shreds. Regardless of its tank, it's very significant damage. Um... Each tick occurring every 0.5 seconds, this total damage increased to 7.5 against slowed or immobilized targets. So this is where Twin Shadows comes in handy. You slow them, you're gonna deal way more damage. 7.5. 7.5 is huge, even on a fucking squishy, okay? And a lot of people don't know about the slow thing. And this is why, coincidentally, it's so good on Velikus. Because almost everything you do slows. This is why in mid lane you're gonna build like Ludus into Landry's, so like the Ludus spreads it out to everyone else. On bot lane you're gonna build it because first of all it's great utility for you, it's the perfect stats because you don't need CDR, you're not going Ludus, you don't need mana, it gives you all the stats you want and it gives you more damage. So it's just fucking flawless. Okay. That's good poke. You gotta watch out, you're cut off from vision. Play happening top lane. Don't stick up don't st don't stand together for in case of barred ult. You don't wanna stand together. You're, you're really hovering nicely, you're utilizing the movement speed nicely. Only you? That's fine. If you flash you can combo. Combo, combo, combo. Nice, good job. Ah, uh, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. I think if you were faster and like more decisive in your combo, you could have you could have killed Bardo. You can chase him. You can chase him here. You, you can chase him. You can chase him. Fuck him. Fuck him. You could have set it up better. Um, you could have chased there. Uh, that's a solid play overall. Key thing is you didn't die two v three. Your team won the top side. Um, first of all, oh, what the fuck? Uh, you shouldn't have um. You shouldn't have um, taken a fight at all because if your team is making a play topside and winning, you can expect a mirror play on the bottom side. That's just the general rule. If you're a topside 3v2, bot lane is like, according to math, gonna be 2v3. So first of all, you play safer. A uh, good thing is you only got ulted, only you. Your flash was late and your combo was late. If you did that faster, like a combo flash, you know, you could E flash. E up like on the bard, flash, WQR, boom. That they, like, you could get maybe two kills in a 2v3. Two, two, but that's just, again, optimization. You surviving is enough, coincidentally. So, yeah. We keep on playing. You need to get a reset here. You need to get a reset. You're fast. You can match this. Anyway, this, bo this bounces. Don't touch it. Reset. Go reset. You're not doing anything. Uh, you're not utilizing this PD boy uh, at all. You're, I don't see you roaming as much. 
you're not recognizing the roaming potentials. So the whole purpose of, okay, uh, why people build Ludens on support and why I don't like it is there it's comfortable. It's just comfortable to build CDR, mana, you can spam, you can sit in lane, fucking spam. And then I, I, I made this build where it's, you're building in such a way that you're avoiding CDR and um, you're not completely avoiding CDR, but you certainly have it less. And you, you're buying cheaper items with faster with faster power spikes and you're not buying mana at all. Why you're not buying mana at all? Because you don't need it. Mana flow band is enough if you can survive early. Then what you do is you utilize the movement speed for fast recalls. Like the, the whole point of this speedy boy build is you make a play bot lane, you recall, in 20 seconds you're here, okay? In 20 fucking seconds you're here. Solo queue never respects that. They will never respect that. So you just want to abuse recalls as much as possible. You're getting short spikes, fast spikes, and then you're moving across the map like so fast. Also, you're collecting the stacks. You have two out of five relentless hunters, which means you haven't moved to the top side at all of the map. You could have had Zoe by now. You could have had Trindamir probably by now. You could have had even Fiddlesticks. So the, the more you collect, the more movement speed you have. So it just enables you again. So you're just zooming, zooming everywhere. That's the whole point. If you're playing like this, you might as well build Ludens. Even though Ludens is like a very fucking... If you're playing like this, just build Landry's first item. Straight up. Like, fuck Ludens. Build Landry's first item if you're gonna play like this. But, yeah. Uh, you're, you're utilizing Mobis in lane correctly, but you want to use them on the map as well. What is the speedy boy build? It's the full-on movement speed build where you buy only things you need, which is like AP, a little bit of HP, so you're not one shuttable, and movement speed. So you're running in and just going for the initial combo. Why CDR is less relevant, like, and mana? Mana, because you don't need to wave clear, you only shoot when you have a good prospect of hitting, and uh, you don't need CDR because you're only going for initial combos. You zoom in top lane, make a fight, Ha pop it off in like five seconds, one combo, you get a kill or assist or flash or whatever, rotate, okay? You're not gonna stay there and wait for your abilities to come up so you don't benefit from CDR. It's just, it's just misused gold. There's like, in there's inherent gold efficiency that people don't think about when you're doing such stuff, such things. So uh, when you do this combo, it's, when you're using this build, it's so valuable if you utilize it properly. There are certainly variations where you can just go like uh, Sork Shoes, Land Race, Relentless, or even Ultimate, or whatever. I just like to do this one, because it's so efficient on the map, and that's the, that's the way to maximize your impact in solo queue. Because Velka's impact in solo queue is pretty low, but if you play it correctly on the map, if you play the map, you can you can increase it. You should have gone vent around here to go for a position of another queue, but whatever. He dies. You're winning on both sides of the map. It shouldn't happen ever in like a proper game. Like you shouldn't ever win two sides of the mirror. Like one should play passive, the other one should win. That's how you create advantages like slowly. You want both sides, which is ridiculous. Shouldn't happen. Uh, now you got massive advantage. Always comment on Velkos. There's a variation where you go Dark Harvest. It plays the same as Speedy Boy. Also, the more you're on the map, the more Dark Harvest stacks you can acquire. But it's a bit riskier than this one. Because this one is more optimal. Dark Harvest can be can surpass this one if you get enough, enough of stacks. And you can shoot Q it, by the way. Um, these effigies... Uh, these fiddle effigies can be cleared by your Q, if you didn't know. So if you see this and it's not moving, just Q it. Just fucking queue it, and he's gonna clear it. Come on, shoot, I don't want it. Yeah, there we go. You can actually clear his effigies with Q, so... Okay. okay. If I was gonna build Landry's first, what should I build second? Depends on the game. Totally depends on the game. Twin Shadows, I believe, for support is too late a second item. That's why we rush it, because... Uh, the earlier you build it, the more uses you get out of it throughout the game, which means the more value you get. Also, you can control dragons are easier. Uh, if you go Landry's, you're gonna go something for stat-wise. If you build Landry's first, you can you can even go fucking Rylai's second. Uh, again, probably you don't want to do that, because 
their comp will either require you to build either Morelos or, or, or Zonias or, or Banshees. Ideally, you would want to get like maybe Spellbinder. It's relatively cheap, good DPS. Maybe Spellbinder if you go Land Race first. Unless you don't need any of the optionals. Because to get Death Cap is too early as a second item support, obviously. You're in fucking welfare, so you don't have money income. You don't have that influx of money, so you can go for super expensive items. That's why we value super cheap items on support, because you don't have access to waves. Okay, now you gotta knock off the mid lane, you can bait them off the, the, the dragon for a fight. Maybe after that fight you can for, play for mid turret. That's your ideal scenario here. That was a bad move, there's no reason for, ch for chasing her, there's no way you beat her. You die. Such fascinating I, You misread the situation there, totally. Yo, Ray the Swag, thank you for a tier 1 sub, man. Welcome back, 3 months. Appreciate it, dude. Yeah, that was just a misread scenario. Like, there's no way you're gonna achieve anything by chasing her. So this is why Speedy Boy is a bit more uh, of a high loss uh, strategy. Because you need to understand how the entire map is gonna function. That's why Speedy Boy only... Because it can be counterproductive if you keep running into bad scenarios. You need to understand your positioning. Yeah, your team was already making a play on Draven, so like, again, what do we talk about? What do we talk about? Mirror plays. If one play is happening here, you're obviously going to be at a disadvantage here, because you're, you're chasing your 2v1, maybe even 3v1, I don't remember, and you were like 1vx here, so you have no idea who's going to come. And even if nobody comes, you're fucking support, so you lose to Zoe. That was just a bad mistake. Could cost you a lot. Depends on how all of this goes down. Good play by Zack. Really good play. Zack is carrying this shit. Oh, Lux missed. That's the speedy boy. See? No other Velka's build would get you here in this fight second time, okay? You died at the start of a fight, you're back at the end. That's that's the whole point. Maximum efficiency. You're always there. You're in. No fight should occur. No bigger fight should occur without you. Yeah, that's the whole point. You want to get the kill participation. You want to be everywhere. You, know, you want to be stacking. So I guess you are going Landry's pretty smart. If I see Morello, I'll hate you forever. Um, okay. We got the zoomies. Oh, the zap. Plus 25 gold. Maximum efficiency. Beautiful. You shouldn't be helping him, honestly. Unless you're gonna take it. Yoink it. Yoink it! Nice. My man. My man. Okay, now the, now the thing is, before, like, here's also one about, thing, about uh, Speedy Boy, one another tip. You were in combat here, so for the next five seconds, you don't benefit from any of the movement speed, okay? So those five seconds, you can overlap eight seconds of recoil, okay? So only three seconds of full movement speed gets taken away for that recoil. And then you can purchase an item uh, or pink wards and reset vision and like, zoom. Plus, you can, like, pick up home guards. So, you're gonna be here in almost equal time, with or without recall. If this is your destination. And that way, you can pick up more pinks, refresh the wards. And that's why you always have to be spamming pink wards, spamming wards. That's how this playstyle works. Maximum volume, maximum efficiency. Uh, this is silver 4 elo in NA. Good word. See, that's the word spam. You could have went for interrupt. I don't know why you didn't. Because, look, if... Uh, here's what happens here. You did it great. Like you were there fast and you warded him. So here's what happens. Look, look at this. Look at this. You found Fiddle. Fiddle has three choices. Ult here, you combo him. Ult you, you still combo him. Back off. He had three choices. Two were wrong. Because as long as you're hovering here, following him, even if he like looks at you, 
he's on range, he can't do shit. He's powerless. He's sitting on a ward. So, his only correct place to go back. You should punish this. That was just absolutely free. You panicked. You panicked, like... You, you wanted to run away from him in case he's ulting you, but you failed to realize even if he ults you, you, you can still interrupt him. Like, you still hold the power to interrupt him. So, keep your enemies close in such a scenario. Keeping your enemies close is a good play. See, you, you basically, like, killed this guy. You basically killed the dog. Nessus died. Nessus got hit by a truck because of you, okay? Uh, da, 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 da. you need to start preparing vision around Baron, 20 minute plus. You need to be running around. You don't want to stand in lane too much. But this is, this is valuable poke. You want to be here. Now that's where you're most efficient. Good 20 shadows for a slow. Q, slow again, beautiful. That's, that's a speedy boy in a nutshell. That's how you play. More of that. Less of standing in lane, observing minions. Oh, Zoe is a good champion. She outplayed you all by spamming W there. Very clear. Okay. You can, you can, you can chase, chase here, chase, 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 chase. You're getting backup. You need to enable your movement speed, so you need to keep track when you're in combat. So if you're if you're pre preparing for a chase, you want to go out of combat. Sometimes not shooting W is better. Because you're gonna still be, you're gonna be out of combat sooner, and then you can chase and then hit with the harder hitting abilities like QEW. So you can think ahead in such scenarios. Like support is all about managing efficiency when you're playing this. It's all about managing efficiency, staying out of combat for the most part, running in, refreshing vision, uh, roaming, maximum efficiency. That's it. That's how you play. That's how this works. He's an ult, you should have tracked Bard, you should you could have killed him. You could have killed Bard. One more, one more Q, nope. Very sad. Mucho sad. It's too early for you guys to penetrate the, their base, so this is pointless. Timers are way too low, clear vision on the steel jungle and reset. Clear vision, steel jungle, reset. You can't really siege. This is a way to throw. Again, massive gold amounts. That yield shutdowns, but they're not very beneficial. Because you didn't purchase with this gold. This is too much gold to be holding while pushing, so reset must occur. No reason to take this fight. Very bad fight. Absolutely irrelevant to the entire game and to your entire like playstyle. It's just you don't you don't care about this fight at all. Who do you think is the best Katarina NA? I don't know. NA has like 400 Katarina mains in Master Plus. They're all annoying. Okay, she should die. She can't kill you. Irrelevant tool to reset. Reset. There's no point in staying. These are just monkey plays. These are like plays that hold no value to them at all. Like, this is random fucking fights. Monkey plays. One for one trade. They get the shutdown there behind, so they benefit. Pointless. Reset should have happened way earlier. Whatever. Oh. Let's see that reset by you. We got free Landry's. And pink words. Why, why are you running to recall? Like, just go in there, recall. Okay, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see. Pink words, two of them. Because the soul dragon is coming. Your support. Should have bought two. For sure. One is very conservative. Even if you haven't played, it doesn't fucking matter. They overextended, bad mistake. Should give you full control of the dragon. Okay, good thing Shadow. She actually went in. Could have maybe went for like a long range Q.
Okay, you really like those bubbles. Dragon, save him! Yeah. Okay, good positioning, nice. You took out the only guy who can steal it, so you win, it doesn't matter. That's a good play, even if Zoe hits you, even if she kills you, you're fine. Doesn't fucking matter. They're gonna be laughing from the afterlife. It's just a good macro play. Because taking out their jungle is the, the... Basically secures you the dragon, so... So that's brilliant, you killed a bunch of them. He teleports now, you wanna collapse and Trindamir and chase him down. Chase down Trindamir if you can get him while clearing the vision and you can go Baron. Use that speed. Eh, you get assist. Oh, never mind. That's what I like to see. That was a Chad W. Okay, you're not hitting it. This is... Okay, I'll... I like this. Your damage is, is negligible in Baron. So what you're what you're doing here is you're preserving yourself out of combat, which is smart. You should also be running around, placing vision, popping these, placing vision, and trying to delay the opponents while trying to maintain the movement speed, because then you're flexible. You can kind of bait them and like uh, kind of go into them a little bit just to push the line of scrimmage, you know, in NA fucking terms. So you're not zoning, you're just sitting here. You could have zoned this much better. Good follow up, but don't. On support, there's so much to be done, honestly. Like, there's so much to be optimized for support, way more than the mid lane. To properly execute like a speedy boy support is a lot harder than mid lane. Okay, now we're going Benchies, I imagine. Which is fine, you shouldn't die ever if you have Banshees, that's good, bye. Fixes up your CDR a little bit, because now more sieging is prevalent, less roaming. So CDR actually has value in late game for, for support. So yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, you bought two pinks, which I like. Now I guys want to utilize the Baron, they have shit wave clear, if you just siege, you should win. Simple as that. You have good poke, pick poke, siege. Oh my god, yeah. That was a bad combo, bad timing. Yeah, just go for it. They're split pushing. 1-3-1, one, one, dude. 1-1-1. One, one, one. This is the NA strat. Yeah, Dogo just getting the plus 12s. Beautiful. GG. For Silver 4, that's good. I clearly laid out the things you could have done. Uh, it's extremely fast how this game happens on a speedy boy support. Uh, I, I imagine you watch my speedy boy guide, which is like 30 minutes in depth about his playstyle. Um, but this game is going to stay on Twitch for like 60 days, I think, because I'm a partner. So you can watch it on past broadcast and like unpack everything you want to know in depth about the support. Because there's a lot. There's a lot of information. Uh, GG's though. Good, good gameplay for Silver 4. By using Speedy Boy, you can definitely get to gold this season. Easy. Absolutely easy. Because you do it well enough. And people at this yellow don't understand how to play against it. If you perfect the roaming, you can get the plat. <laughs> Thank you for the roads.